A good pie is all about the crust. You want one that's tender and flaky and has a good buttery flavor. That's not too much to ask, is it? In this episode, you'll learn about the different types of fat in pie crust dough. And I'll show you three different ways of mixing the dough to get our ultimate flaky crust. But a good pie crust is all about getting the right balance between your flour, your fat, and your water. There are two different kinds of fat that are used in pie crust. There's butter, unsalted of course, not salted, and shortening. Well, I guess there are three kinds of fat. You could also use lard. Shortening, and lard for that matter, are pure fats. So they'll cut easily into flour and make a super flaky pie crust. Butter, on the other hand, is only about 80% pure fat. The rest are milk, solids, and water. It will still make a slightly flaky pie crust, but its real purpose is to inject flavor. For my pie crust, I want the best of both worlds, so I use a combination of butter for flavor and shortening for that flakiness. All butter crusts are also delicious, especially if you use a high-fat butter, like the European-style butters, and make sure not to over-process your dough, otherwise it will go from tender to tough. So when we go to mix our dough, the most important thing to remember is to leave surprisingly large chunks of fat in the dough. There are three different methods for mixing the pie dough that will leave the butter and the shortening in large chunks. The most old-fashioned way is to use your hands. We'll start with the flour in the bowl. We're going to add a little bit of granulated sugar, some salt, this is table salt, and I'm just going to mix this up with my fingers until it's combined, just like that. And I'm going to add my fat butter, it's been cut into pieces, it's nice and chilled, separate that out a little bit, and the shortening. And now I'm going to toss those pieces with the flour so they don't stick together. And using my fingers, I'm actually going to press and smear the fat. The beauty of this old-fashioned technique is that there's absolutely no way you can over-process this. So you'll end up with a super flaky crust. It's also nice if you don't have any of the power tools like a food processor or a stand mixer. And even if you do have the power tools and use them most of the time, it's a great idea to give this method a try a couple of times. You'll really be able to tell when your fat is combined properly. So we're going to keep going until we get those quarter inch flakes. See like here and here and here. Now if you want to use power tools, you have two options. You can use a food processor or you can use a stand mixer. With the stand mixer, you want to make sure it's fitted with the paddle attachment. In the bowl, I have my flour and I'm going to add my sugar and my salt. And I'm just going to combine this on low speed. Start it slow, because if you, if you put it into high gear too fast, your flour will go flying. Okay, now I'm going to add the fat. Again, the butter, nice and cold. Cut up, and my shortening. I'm going to mix on low speed. The paddle attachment is doing the work of my hands, the same sort of smearing process. It will take a little while to cut in the butter, but it is hands-free, so I can actually step away from the mixer if I need to. The food processor, on the other hand, is super quick, so you want to be especially careful not to overprocess your fat. Again, we have our flour already in the food processor, sugar, salt, a couple of quick pulses just to combine. Now we're going to add the fat. Shortening goes in, scatter it around as best you can. Butter goes in, 
It's also important when you're using the food processor to make sure that your fat is super cold. Now to avoid over processing, make sure you use short, quick bursts of power. Most processors have some sort of a pulse button and that's what we're gonna use here. Tap down the flour if it gathers up around the lid so you don't lose any of it. And check frequently so you're not over processing the fat. Now my butter is still in large pieces so I'm going to do a couple more. There we go. So this looks great. Our fat here is still cold, and as you can see, it's in pieces slightly larger than peas. It's time to add the water and finish up the dough. No matter what method you're using, add the water sparingly. If the recipe gives you a lower and a higher amount, always start with a lower amount and then check for doneness. I'm going to drizzle over ice cold water, top, and I like to add a little bit of lemon juice. This is two teaspoons. It adds a teens bit of flavor, but it also helps cut the gluten to create a more tender crust. And now I'm gonna pulse this in short bursts, just until the dough starts coming together and it forms moist crumbs. To test for doneness, take a little of the crumbs into your fingers and squeeze gently. If it holds together, then you've added enough water and you're good to go. And if the dough doesn't hold together, you want to add maybe a teaspoon or two more water. Don't add more than that and then pulse again and give it another check. To shape the dough, I've spread out two pieces of plastic wrap onto the counter in a cross to create a larger piece. And now I'm going to dump my moist crumbs right into the center. It doesn't look much like a dough right now, but with the help of this plastic wrap, I'm going to shape it and press it into a disc. I like to use the plastic wrap as a guide because I find that my hands are quite warm and I don't want to melt any of the fat. I want to keep it still nice and cold. No matter which mixing method you use, you'll still have a dough that looks exactly like this and you'll shape it just as I am now. Once you've shaped your dough, into a nice round disc, wrap it in plastic, and send it to the fridge to chill for at least an hour. The chilling helps relax any gluten that might have formed, and it also firms up those pockets of fat so you'll have a nice flaky crust.